Hello and welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Funnel Neptune. Today we have with us the Chief Environmental Health Officer, Mr. Paco Ragnanen, who will provide us with some information on one of the regulations which is part of the Public Health Act. This is the Offensive and Hazardous Trade Regulation. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. Okay, one of the regulations under the amended um, Public Health Act is the Offensive and Hazardous um, Trade Regulation. Can you give us a brief overview and in some great insight into this? Right. So, in the 1978 regulation, under the Public Health Act of 1975, you had the Offensive Trade Regulations. These regulations was put in place to look at different types of trades and the impact on the environment, the impact on human health. So you had under the 1978 regulations, which at the time was called the, the offensive trade regulations, issues with regards to the slaughter of animals. And we can well understand what are some of the issues associated with slaughtering of animals. So you talk about the noise, you talk about the disposal of offal, you talk about blood, you talk about hygiene requirements, and uh, generally you talk about the upkeep of uh, the slaughter places. Mm -hmm. So slaughtering of animals form part of the offensive trade regulations. You had uh, issues with regards to the storage of hides. Now hides is really the skin of certain animals that were being used uh, to, they were being cured and used for leather purposes, making leather and that kind of thing. Then you had soap making. You had the issue of uh, chicken pens and rearing of chicken. Mm -hmm. um, open fires. These were some of the areas that were included in the regulation way back in 1978. With the amended regulations in 2020, under the amended Public Health Act, what happened is there were more areas added mm -hmm. to the offensive trade regulations, but it was also revised from just offensive trade to include hazardous trade. So now the amended regulation is called the, the offensive and hazardous trade regulation. Okay. What are some of the areas that mm -hmm. we're talking about that were included in this amendment? They include uh, things like uh, glue, packaging and processing, foam making, bleach manufacturing and certain chemical manufacturing, mm -hmm. cement and cement products, quarrying, spraying of automobiles, garages, automobile repairs. We looked at um, areas uh, such as printing and uh, printing houses. We looked at jewelry making and added to that was the issue of woodworking, joinery and spraying of furniture. Then we had uh, as well um, not just chicken rearing, but also pig farming. Okay. So pig farms were, were added to the new regulations. And then we had uh, areas such as incinerators. We have uh, recycled facilities, charcoal making, and welding plants. These were some of the additional areas, additional trades mm -hmm. that were brought in under these regulations. So why? When we look at these activities, not only are they, there are many public health complaints that have been lodged as a result of these activities, but these activities impact the environment. Mm -hmm. They also impact human beings and we can go into more detail as far as that is concerned. But these regulations were intended to do two things. One is to ensure that there is a regulatory framework by which these activities 
can continue to, to take place because the law is, in, is not in any way, shape or form, trying to prevent these activities. But what it is trying to do is to say that there are certain requirements you must meet uh, in order to adequately perform these activities. So that is the first part. The other part is uh, we need to look at occupational health and safety issues. What are the hazards uh, that uh, people who work in this trade, what are the hazards are they exposed to? What mechanisms are put in place to be able to deal with these hazards and to manage these hazards? I'd like you to hold on to that thought. We are definitely due for a break. We will be back in a moment. In a world where germs are widespread, comes a group of superhero germ busters, the germaphores. We spend most of our time fighting germs every day of the week. After I play, I wash my hands. Before I eat, I wash my hands. After I play with my puppy, I wash my hands. I cover my sneezes with my forearm or elbow when I am in public. And I cover my cough to avoid spreading dangerous germs. We are the germophones, germ busting superheroes. You can be too. Always wash your hands and cover your sneeze and cough. Let's stop the spread of menacing germs. We'll be back, germophones, with more powerful germs. And we will be waiting to prevent you from spreading. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with Mr. Parker Ragnarin, who's speaking on the offensive and hazardous trade regulation, which is part of the Public Health Act. Before we took the break, we were discussing um, in terms of why the trades were added uh, to the amended um, regulation. And you mentioned that the second one was occupational safety. If you can go a little more in depth on this. Yes. So, protecting the health of employees, people who are engaged in that trade, mm -hmm. is extremely important. They are exposed to certain hazards. So, let's take um, spraying of automobiles, for example the pins that are used and the different chemicals that are used in terms of applying it to the vehicle, the body and so forth. Are there mechanisms, one, to be able to protect the health and well-being of a staff, the person who is applying that. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at the occupational hazards. This is what the regulation is trying to do, to look at the occupational hazards uh, and to see that there must be adequate protective measures implemented to be able to deal with these hazards. So once we talk about exposure to certain hazards, we need to look at now how we can prevent these hazards. And it would include invariably the use of certain PPEs. Importantly, not all face masks, for example, would protect you from dust. Mm -hmm. There are different dust size, particulate matter sizes. And therefore, you need to get specialized mask. So you need to know the type of trade to be able to determine the type of PPE. Because sometimes we may be wearing a, a, a dust mask, but it's not effective in what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So occupational hazards are very, very important. We are seeing today, more than ever, that uh, we have increased number of of persons who are dying from cancer and cancers have become more prevalent. Yeah. Enough research has not gone into St. Lucia to find out exactly what are the causes of some of these things. But there's no doubt that people are unduly exposed to certain hazards, including chemical hazards that may impact their, their health. Then you have uh, the issue of uh, people who are living in close prox proximity to where these activities are taking place. Yeah. Very often, we find that there are people who would tell you that they cannot breathe at home. I, I sure. recently speak, spoke to a lady and she said to me, she's afraid falling asleep at night because she doesn't know if the smoke that is coming into her house is going to choke her because she has serious asthma, asthmatic condition. She doesn't know if she'll choke 
in her sleep and die. And so she's afraid to fall asleep. That is just one of many. We have many persons who are complaining. And I understand charcoal is a short term thing, but when it starts the process, there is a lot of smoke associated mm -hmm. with it. And therefore, what we have is people are complaining that not even at night they can sleep properly because of the constant smoke uh, yeah. and the smell that, uh, that actually remains in the room. It stays there for days and they find difficulty breathing. There are many people who have underlining medical conditions, including asthma and other respiratory conditions like COPD. And these persons are complaining all the time. Then there is uh, the issue of being able to enjoy your home. And so you've built uh, an expensive house, uh, but you find uh, you cannot go and see the sunset in your veranda because you are constantly barraged by, by these hazards. Um, the same thing happens not just for charcoal making, but we also have issues of, of some of the activities that we've spoken about, uh, such as the garages yeah. and the fumes that emanate from the operations of the garage. We have furniture making, not just the noise from the equipment, uh, but the dust that is produced. Uh, and then uh, when they spray this, this furniture, you also have aerosols uh, that are affecting people. And depending as to where you are living, you, 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 you are likely to get uh, a heavy dose of these chemicals. Okay. So um, before we close, I just want you to tell St. Lucian, for those persons who are in, the, um, in those amended trades, what is the new procedure? Do they require a license to actually practice yes. um, those trades quickly? So the procedure, as was in 1978, there was need for a license to engage in certain trade that we've spoken about. So the issue of a license is nothing new. Mm -hmm. A license has always been required for undertaking certain trades. These new areas has also come on the uh, regulated area and there is a license for operating these trades. The license is, is stipulated in the law in such that if you do not want to engage in an activity for a full year and you want to do it for three months, you can pay the license for three months. It would be a quarter of the amount. Now a license under the new regulations is $100 a year. Okay. So if you want to, to, to engage in a, in a trade for three months, the fee that you'd pay for the license is just $25, not $100. Okay. Wonderful. But if you, want to go for the, if you want to go for six months, mm -hmm. you pay half of the amount, which is $50. Okay. And if you want to go for the full year, then you pay the annual okay. fee, which is uh, $100. There's, you, there's always been an inspection fee and that remains, so that has not changed. Thank you so much. Well, we have come to the end of the program for today. I want to thank you so much for giving us this valuable information as it relates to the offensive and hazardous trade regulation. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. You have been watching Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Fernal Neptune. Thanks for watching. Until next time.